It was actually pretty funny because it kind of became like an ongoing thing. But uh, uh, I, I came into the meeting and I'm like, so what is Uberflip? And everyone was like, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, and <laughs> that's why like, you're that, here. That's Mitch. why you're here, Mitch. <laughs> so. The following is based on the true story of how one B2B software company risked everything by featuring a dungeon master, a baseball coach, and The Bachelor in their homepage explainer videos. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome to Video in Focus, the show that explores the expanding role of video in modern B2B marketing. Here in this special episode, I'm on site with my friends at Uberflip, a content experience platform. And if you don't know what that is, don't worry, in a few minutes, you're gonna know because you're gonna see their explainer video. Now, the reason I'm here with the Uberflip team is I feel like they've created an explainer video that takes advantage of video's real superpowers. It not only educates and explains what they do, but it connects with you on a real human level. In fact, it actually makes you laugh and it makes you want to share their content with others in your business. We're also going to talk with their agency of record, One Method, who came up with some concepts that actually include one of these. The first thing is, is making sure that everyone on your team can deliver the same message to the audience. And when you look at our own team, everyone had their own version uh, of what is Uberflip? What does it mean to a marketer? What does it mean to a salesperson in that organization? What does it mean to the company as a whole? Right. And we couldn't get a straight answer in our own office, let alone at home from my wife. Like, she couldn't describe what we do. Uberflip is a content experience platform. It's a scalable way to create frictionless, personalized experiences around your content that shape and influence the buyer journey. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> slow down, Sheldon. You know. How about you explain it to me like I'm five? We're known in the market currently for a very specific thing. Lots of people think that we're a content marketing platform and we're really starting to create this new co category, content experience. And with that comes a lot of different layers, right? And that was also part of the challenges. Like not only are we trying to get people to understand this new category, but we're also trying to get them to understand what it is that we offer and what we do, right? So. The way I approached it was, okay, let's do a product explainer, but let's also do like a really slick brand video. There has to be a way to merge the two. This is a blog post, this is a YouTube video, and this little guy here is an ebook. Most of the time, you give your customers this. But Uberflip lets you give them this. Meow. <gasps> How did you know? We obviously looked at a lot of explainer videos when we were looking at this project. And I think there is, there's a lot that kind of follow the same patterns and whether it's an animated video or whether it's a, you know, a simple kind of straight explainer video where it shows a lot of the back end of the product. And I think for us, we really wanted something that was going to be, you know, that, something that not, viral is not the right word, but something that people were like, wow, this is a great piece of marketing. It's something we want to, we want to share, so. We went to some different B2B agencies that ha have like really great experience in doing explainer of videos, but they all felt like the same approach to me. And I, we just, we wanted, we wanted something else. You, the marketer, are vying for the affections of the star of the show, your prospective customer. No sooner do you sit down for a little heart-to-heart -heart than your competition shows up with his square jaw and washboard abs. How are you supposed to compete with this? That's where Uberflip comes in. Full confession, this project was not smooth from beginning to end. Now, working with One Method was a great experience, but we actually tried to rock this before that. Mm -hmm. And that first go, we did not, I'm not gonna name the agency that we worked with, but it didn't work out. Um, and in that go, we tried to overly script, direct, in, you know, envision the end before it even began. And we, we got all the way through to filming it. We saw some raw versions and it was terrible. Mm. It, was, uh, it was the wrong level of cheesiness. It was, uh, it lacked professionalism just in terms of uh, the visualizations, the acting. So the, so many different ingredients, we were able to take a step back and look at that outcome and say, well, what would we actually do differently this time? 
And one of the first things we said is we got we to gotta get remove ourselves from this to a degree. And that was a big part of deciding, yeah. let's go and let's trust someone to help us run this production. One method, we, we kind of specialize in doing a few things, advertising, design, as well as our own kind of experiments and things that we find interesting, kind of turned into our passion projects. Myself, I'm an associate creative director here, um, grew up as a kind of art director and designer. I mean, I grew up watching a lot of like sitcom comedies, so like Seinfeld over Friends all day, every day. Wow. Would be one of my bold one statement. of my bold statements I'd make about like how I was brought up. Um, you also and, really dated yourself. As yes, well. I did. Yeah. So there's a, like you can have a, now a bit of a range in your mind there. I'm a copywriter at One Method. I, I write a lot of the the things that we we do. Uh, a big part of the ideation process a lot of the time and just uh, kind of like throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks. A lot of like what I liked about this industry is kind of like kind of a halfway point between like stand-up comedy, like writing writing and having those creative challenges and trying to come up with something uh, with a lot of different requirements and then still be satisfied with what you're doing at the end of the day is a, is a really fun challenge. What content is a legendary amulet stuck in Mount Kragathon? Your audience reaches the summit. They pull the amulet out of the mount. Success! Fail! Me! Amazing! <laughs> A lot of our clients include, um, you know, brands by Nestle, uh, so Kit Kat, Smarties, uh, Delicio, Pizza. We have Johnson's Johnson, but also brands like Rogaine, which you know, Mitch and I found ourselves working on, didn't expect you to get a chance to work on a yeah. Rogaine in your career. Yeah. <laughs> I know, it made us like very like self-aware, you know, like while we were working. <laughs> I worked on uh, this one for Delicio uh, a little while ago. So, um, the, the project was called Crust Paper, and we turned uh, competitors' pizza crusts into posters that then we used to advertise our new pizza. And then another one we did was with uh, Motrin. We came up with this uh, concept called uh, Tina's Uterus that was basically a whole bunch of employees working to sort of uh, brainstorming pain for uh, Tina inside her uterus. It was really weird, but also it ended up pain being- storming. They were pain storming, yeah. <laughs> and that's why I can no longer attend the holiday party. <laughs> anyway. I think I was, to be honest, at first hesitant, but intrigued. I and mean, they've they done some very cool branding work uh, for companies like Tangerine, uh, more recently Scotiabank. There's a campaign that we helped Burger King launch for, so for the month of October leading into Halloween. There's a limited time offer. If you buy the nuggets, you get free ghost nuggets on the side, which <laughs> ghost nuggets are nothing. Uh, so we had, we had, you know, had video content that elaborately advertised this like empty parchment paper with a, just a di lone dipping sauce. <laughs> Ghost nuggets. Uh, so, you know, elaborately shooting nothing uh, was a highlight this year for me. <laughs> I mean, no, no question. It was a risk going with one method versus some of the other companies that we were looking at who had, not in a bad way, but the generic B2B marketing explainer video. So I've been a bit of a fangirl for a while. And so we reached out to them with um, our proposal and what we were looking to do. And they wrote back basically saying, eh, sounds great, but like, I don't think we're a fit for you. Which really sucked to hear, right? Because yeah. like, why, why not? First reaction was, what the fuck is Uberflip? <laughs> <laughs> um, we quickly learned through analogies and because it's the kind of the quick, quickest shorthand to explain such right. a complex uh, digital product and service. Mm -hmm. It was actually pretty funny because it kind of became like an ongoing thing but uh, uh, I, I came into the meeting and I'm like, so what is Uberflip? And everyone was like, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, uh, and that's like, why you're that, here. That's Mitch. why you're here, Mitch. So, um, that was that was kind of my first reaction, and it was kind of uh, a lot of reading initially, and then kind of just uh, talking with John a lot, and just being like, okay, so I get this, I get this, I get this, and like I write an analogy, and I'm like, does that make sense? And 
He's just, no, not really. No, let me, let me see this. It's like, <laughs> that's closer? I'm like, okay, all right. It was, a, it was a really interesting exercise that ultimately I think became really helpful um, for actually crafting the, the content. Because especially like when, when you're the one who has to go on that journey of what is this, um, like from zero. Because I think a lot of stuff we work on, we kind of know what it is already. You know, like even like, you know, chicken nuggets, like that's a lot simpler than uh, Uber Flip. Yeah, exactly. They definitely had a process, yeah. which was the reason we went with them, right? Like we tend um, to be guilty of going into something already three quarters of the way baked, right? We're just like, no, this is our vision, right? Um, and we did not want that to be the case this time because we felt like any time we were trying to do this in the past, we were hitting a wall there um, just because we were too involved, like way too involved. So we, we kind of, Jason and Dan and I kind of had to sit down with Randy and say, like he'd be like, I have this great idea. And we're just like, we're sure you do, but like just know this time. I actually think I did a, a really good job at taking a bit of a step back, which is hard for me, which is why I say it was a good job. Uh, <laughs> now, now, first off, we have an amazing team here at Uberflip who owned a lot of the day-to-day -day work on this. It was important for me and it was important for the outcome I think that we let the people who you know are the product marketer today who are the brand and creative messaging today take the lead this time. I love the fact that these guys had like page had a process they had a you know a vision and they were experts way beyond what we were um, in how to create a great video. Definitely early on mm. there was tons of uh, jargon that was uh, kind of yeah. kind of given to us as here's the reading material to understand what Uberflip is. So a lot of the times we were trying to strip that strip that away and find like more human ways to say things, yeah. uh, or even just questioning like, is this term a legitimate term or is it jargon for jargon's sake? Yeah. Well, and the other thing too is I think uh, Johnny and I talked about this in terms of like B B to B is kind of it's still kind of B to C because you're you're still talking to a person on the other end of that. Uh, they want to be entertained and they still need to be informed. So it's kind of like taking that information and not taking yourself too seriously, but, but making sure you're getting all those essential points in the mix. So here are three lunches that I made in seconds using mostly the same stuff. PB and J, light on the J for Ryan, crust free PB Sandy for Ethan, and uh, well, whatever these things are supposed to be for Lila. She's going through a bit of a phase right now. I know exactly what my kids like, not because I'm a great fake parent, though I am, but because every lunch I get to see what parts they loved and hated, which means every day those bagged lunches get better and better. I start adding fruit snacks, a little handwritten notes to build self-esteem. The best part? Totally scalable. I can pack custom lunches with love for three kids or 3,000. No industrial kitchen required. When one method approached the project, they said, we're gonna go and talk to a whole bunch of your team and understand how they describe Uberflip. And as they went around, they kept hearing all these analogies. One of the earlier simple explanations we got from, I don't know if it was Randy or someone from the sales team, but the analogy was, was baseball related. It was about just getting up to bat and having, automatically having a higher batting average and having more at bats. And it's like, a benefit thing, you kind of can't understand what it, mm -hmm. what uh, the platform does out of that, yeah. but that was one of the earlier explanations that we were, uh, or analogies that were yeah. helping yeah. to explain it to us. Yeah. I definitely love analogies. A lot of the keynotes that I do are filled with analogies, left, right, and center. My analogy batting average is probably a good baseball average. You know, <laughs> 300, maybe I have a season where I'm 400. <laughs> But that's because my team helps me filter through all the garbage that I'm throwing out to find the goals. One little tidbit that I did pick up from his sales team is that he'll come in like every other week with a new analogy on how to sell the, <laughs> sell the product. So uh, they're constantly you know, getting up to speed on the latest uh, way to talk about it mm -hmm. and, uh, and or poking holes in his previous analogies. Right. Yeah. So they came back and they're like, there are a ton of analogies you know, beaming through this organization. Uh, and that was in a meeting and Paige and Jason and Dan all kind of looked at me being like, his fault, right? One of the decks, like I said, it just had one word on it and it said analogies. And they were like, so your team really <laughs> likes analogies. And yeah. we're like, yeah, we know. Yeah, there was a slide, I think towards the end that was just like, 
analogies? Question mark. Yeah. I have and it was more so to just raise the question like, what what the yeah. f is happening with the analogies? Yeah. What? I even created one. I said it was a teppanyaki table one. <laughs> Like a Benihana, yeah. where you, you have the marketers in the middle with all the oh, content, no. and you're serving up different dishes. Just no. Around this circular table. Because it's all the same ingredients, but the experience you're delivering up is different. Amazing. <laughs> Ooh, explain it like you're my boss selling it to his boss. Profits, progress, sports analogy. Nailed it. <laughs> One method themselves got to a point where they said, you know, there's so many damn analogies here. We just have to get rid of the analogies. We have to explain what Uberflip is in a more concrete fashion. Yeah. And that's where they were for probably a, a week or two of their process. And then they said, you know, why don't we just embrace this yeah. and distill down to a few analogies that are really going to stick. Yeah. I think as we got further into it, um, analogies became more and more handy to explain something that was so complex. Yeah to just dumb it down. We were doing it kind of already in terms of like, okay, what is Uberflip? How exactly does it work? Simplest terms, how do we do that? And I think, you know, as uh, we kind of worked through that, it kind of, it became a useful tool for us. And we're like, if this is useful for us, it's probably just useful for everyone, <laughs> we actually. Just go with this. Like, we should, we should probably go in this direction because <laughs> I think we're, we're needlessly complicating things by, by throwing this out the window. And uh, like, let, let's focus on making this really engaging. And boom. Prospects nurture themselves. <laughs> Will it make my team smarter? <laughs> <laughs> your team? <laughs> no, but it will make your content smarter by giving you useful analytics, insights, and optimization tools. Always learning, always getting smarter. Maybe too smart. What? I, I think the main hero video, the first one that's on our homepage, is by far the most clever and amazing amount of information compacted into two minutes. But it's funny, my favorite one in terms of just simplifying what we do uh, is the, we call it the sack lunch video, which funny enough, the first version of that, I think we were going to do something with preserves, like different jams. And I was like, no one cares about jams. Right? Like we were being pitched, and I was like, I love the idea, but like no one is really passionate about jams. And so we were all sitting there throwing different ideas. And one of the things that I was able to relate to myself is I've got three kids, and packing lunches for them is not as simple as let me go and grab three sandwiches that are all cream cheese and bagel and three of the same cookie and three of the same fruit. It's like, no, they each have their own preferences. And we started to play off of that and that landed us at sack lunch. Well, the, the, the dungeon master is pretty hilarious. Yeah, that one's so good. And that's just like a scene within a video. Yeah. I thought you were going to say Bachelor. But like the Bachelor. We love, we love the Bachelor. That we were coming up with different themes, right? Yeah. So it was like, okay, what, are the, what, are the, what is the analogy we're going to like go with for this one? Mm -hmm. And we're both Bachelor fans, so yeah. we just we kind of came up with the idea. I think when we finally got into the actual videos, though, we all really liked the, the money ball was a surprising one where everyone yeah. was like, whoa! According to this data, it seems like that aging outfielder and injured catcher are actually a winning combination of content. You might be able to turn this season around after all. How the those two worlds kind of seamlessly wove in and out of each other, like baseball analytics and your team and you're like making sure that all your content's like working hard for you and just adjusting, like it just seems such an uh, easy kind of fit. And actually one bit I just, I loved, I loved was also like the weird um, s and bit that we have in there. Like, I, I love that bit so much, it's so funny. Now, explain it to me like you're a dungeon master. No, 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 wrong dungeon. Oh, oh, I got you. Yeah, I think that's like a, yeah, bucket list. Yeah, that's a bucket box. list. That's a bucket list <laughs> item for sure. Yeah. So they, there's all kinds of these props, whether it be like a ball gag or like a latex suit. Honestly, it, it was. <laughs> it was I one of the yeah. It was one of the funnier parts. This is actually tr completely true. Funny story. We were supposed to film this at a studio, and it fell through the weekend, the week of. So we had to film it here at our office, and we did it on the weekend. I was with my kids, I think my wife was out of town, so I brought my kids down just to kind of play in the office and have fun while we're, while we're recording. And they kept coming over and checking in. And at one point, 
it's the dungeon master scene. And I'm just like, no, go back. You're not, no, just go, go eat another snack. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. <laughs> yeah. quickly that it's time to take the Oh my goodness. It is time wow. to go. <laughs> wow. So I'll be very honest, I was nervous uh, because I think that the videos are extremely clever, but they are high level, right? And, and we did that intentionally. We, did, we decided we're not gonna go into the weeds and overly focus on product at every stage. We wanna make sure people would understand how we could help them and, and how we help them, especially in technology, changes so quickly. And the investment in these videos, we didn't want them to work for three to six months. We wanted these to work for at least one to two years in our mind. Our risk though was, would people be able to connect what do we offer to what do we actually do? Uh, and, and that's, you know, the way I look at it is what we're trying to do with these videos is capture attention, capture awareness, create intrigue to want to speak to our team to see that demo. These were not product demo videos, right. which was a very important distinction to make. The reactions are great on these videos. Uh, we, my wife, first of all, finally says she can explain what we do. So that's a huge win. Uh, it's funny, in, in our Slack instance, you'll see a lot of our employees talk about how their parents understand what we do now. So it's, it's this whole aspect of just connecting with a broader audience to explain the value of what Uberflip can do. Uh, the, the next aspect is some of our customers who you know, really say, you know what, this captures the value that you're delivering for me in ways that I never could. So what my hope is what trickles from there is that those customers then say to other people in their organization, you gotta watch this, you gotta see why we're invested in content experience, let alone Uberflip. The ultimate goal is for someone to understand what we do and be intrigued enough to talk to us about it, right? Um, but we use it in so many different places. We have it on our homepage. We use them in decks at speaking engagements. We also have them in all of our nurtures as part of that path. We have some ad campaigns that um, it maps to. So we're putting it where it makes sense to be able to engage our audience throughout yeah. that journey. Some of our sales reps are using it in their cadences out um, just for outreach. And one of, the, one of the reps sent me a screenshot and she was like, oh my gosh, this is the best. I had a VP of marketing who actually went and clicked the video and watched it. And he's like, I loved those. I will get on a call with you if you explain it to me like a dungeon master. Like he, he actually wrote that and said that and she was like, okay, done, sure. <laughs> I've been trying to get you to engage at all. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, and now, yeah, now we've probably uh, cost Uberflip a huge expense in sending their <laughs> sales staff to uh, improv classes. Improv class, yeah. <laughs> the biggest reason these videos were a success was trust, right? At, at multiple levels. I mean, for me, I'll be honest, I'm, I'm a bit of a control freak sometimes, especially when it comes to our brand. And the key on this project was the ability for us to go to market with a bit of a different lens on what we do. Um, and that was a combination of me trusting our team, but also our team trusting the agency that we partnered with, which is hard to do because you always say, well, they don't know us. They've only gone to know us over the last number of weeks. But sometimes that's the strength because the person you're talking to doesn't know you either. Let go of some of the control. Yeah. For sure. Like I would idea. say my number one thing is that you know your product, trust that someone will help you deliver what yeah, you go, need. Go into it with like more of an open mind yeah. about like taking their advice and feedback and exactly. stuff. Exactly. Especially if it's something like an explainer video, the whole purpose of the video is to communicate what you do to a person who doesn't know who you are. Yeah. And I think like you're so close to it as, as being in the company mm -hmm. that like letting an outside company who ideally doesn't know anything about you explain mm -hmm. you yeah. is... Um, yeah, you need to just kind of have an open mind and let them let them do their thing. No, no one understand your category and try to do something that uh, doesn't necessarily f just follow that mm -hmm. uh, trend, the trends or the existing model of that. I think with that would come trusting the agency or the team that yeah. uh, you're working with on it. I think that that trust is really important. Just transparency, like don't don't pull any punches. If you hate it. 
that's totally fine. Just say you hate Just it. Just say you hate it. <laughs> and uh, we will rework this. And we'll, we're going to make something that we both really like. I would say the second thing would probably be, if you've ever heard Mark Schaefer speak or any of his books, he's talking a lot about being human, right? And so um, I would say that's probably the second biggest takeaway with me is like, at the end of the day, I always get so caught up, like I read this stat from Google that said B2B buyers are looking even more for a B2C experience. It's like, well, no kidding, like they're people. Nailed it. <laughs> All right, I think I got it. But just once more, can you explain it to me like I'm almost done watching an explainer video? I kind of believe that B2B kind of doesn't exist, it's bullshit. Um, yeah. Treat it as B2C and, and see where that takes you, and then layer in the, the, the B2B facts and, and content uh, kind of as you go. Information can be compelling, but I, I think entertainment is too, because if you're not paying attention, the information doesn't matter. So I think that was one of the big things we came with, like looking at these, this content and these videos. It's like, if we have to make a two minute video to explain all of this, it's gotta be entertaining, because no one's gonna watch a two minute video that is just stuff. <laughs> like lined up edge to edge, so. Look to connect on that level and just like be human and not try to over explain something to death and just try to connect. Mm. Yeah. Well said. Thank you. Well said. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <clears throat> <Sorry>. Question. <laughs> Can I keep this? Here, we let the dice decide. Yeah, totally, go ahead.